Ray Pember's fiance, Naomi Misora. Heard that name before. Huh. So it's her. She's from the Los Angeles baby murder case. That's right. The Los Angeles BB murder case is a story that took place one year before the events of the Kira case and Chapter 1 of Death Note. This is a novel written after the manga serialization of Death Note ended. It has unfortunately not seen an anime adaptation, which is a shame. A story like this would work perfectly as a movie, or would be amazing if it ever did happen. This novel's importance and relevance to the story is an essential part of the Death Note experience if you're trying to get the most out of the series. Introducing the world's greatest detective, L, and a large part of the orphanage known as Whammy's House. Since this preludes chapter 1, there is no Death Note used throughout the story. It is purely a chronological introduction to the character of L, Whammy's House, and a woman named Naomi Misura. Very specific murders have been taking place around the Los Angeles area. The complexity of these murders is of interest to this century's greatest detective, L. After being let off from the FBI, Naomi Misura gets an email from her fiancé, Ray Pemba, who also works with the FBI. What she thinks is a message from Ray Pemba is not actually a message from Ray Pemba, but instead is a direct message from the detective L, requesting specifically for Naomi Mizuro to be his eyes and ears for the Los Angeles BB murder case, as he himself is on average working multiple cases at a time. The prerequisite for L taking on a case is that there must be at least 10 deaths, $1 million at stake, be of specific interest to L, or be difficulty level L. This case falls into the last two. Chronologically reading this before any other Death Note material sets up L as the god of all intellect. Not only is he the number one detective in the world, he had previously made the top two and top three detectives give up their names to him in something known as the Detective Wars, making L each one of the top three detectives in the world. He has solved every case he has ever taken on, and it is stated that L can achieve what entire FBI task force divisions can, multiple times over, all by himself, and as time goes on, by the Kira case, his intelligence has grown even more. On name alone, his word holds a lot of value and respect, so when Naomi Misura gets asked specifically to be his eyes and ears for the Los Angeles BB murder case, despite how forward he is with his demands, she accepts and begins working with him on the case. There has been a total of three murders carried out by the same individual. This is evidenced by voodoo dolls left at the scene of the crime, along with clues that directly point out to the next attack. These are not simple murders. Each one of the three individuals has been brutally killed and tortured. The person behind these attacks was psychotic, and his name was Beyond Birthday. The famous inventor Quillish Whammy discovered L when he was just a child. Stated in L Changed the World, which is an alternate timeline of the main story's events, that L had prevented World War III at just eight years old and had been a nameless orphan who was taken in by Whammy from a young age. While it is a believable feat for someone like L to prevent World War III, L Change the World is set in a different reality and cannot be considered to how events really happened. In the LABB murder case, World War III is also mentioned as happening and did in fact take place around the mid-1980s. Mistranslation or different reality, World War III happened in the Death Note universe and after it is when L became a detective. Oba and Obata release bonus manga panels alongside the release of the L Change the World novel, which show and say a lot about L's own introspection. For example, as a child, he is met with other orphans who see a new face and innocently try to cuddle him. This results in L beating them all down, proclaiming that they were attempting to employ violence on him. He declares that he is justice. As a child, L was often found playing by himself, doing puzzles or playing with toys alone. These puzzles would advance in difficulty to the point where no toy or puzzle could challenge him anymore. Watari, which was Quillish Wami's pseudonym, eventually gets L a computer where he would spend most of his time sat in front of. L had stated that communicating through a computer would give him power. This next part is especially fascinating. Quillish Wami was already rich, the world's most famous inventor. However, L started giving out financial advice. In the span of two years, L had multiplied Watari's net worth by 20,000 times. 2 million percent gains in the stock market pre-dot-com bubble. This made Watari and L, if not some of the richest, the richest people in the world. Assuming Quillish Wami's net worth was already high, which it was, the money itself never interested L all that much. It was more of the puzzle of how the equity markets worked. And so several years later, he comes across a serial murder case that was stated to be more difficult than any puzzle or game. 
This was a case that had no leads and that zero people had been able to solve. This would be the moment that defines what L views as fun and what his best use case in the world is. From the moment he solved his first case, he would become a detective, with Quilishwemi now under the name Watari, acting as his handler and spokesperson. Some more panels from the special display L's life as an adult, where it shows how abnormal he is. From being awake over 100 hours straight, having zero concept of time, being found sleeping sideways on a chair, even having his own personalized human washing machine, because as much as he likes being clean, washing himself takes too much effort. L is definitely not normal, but I find him to be quite misunderstood in the later story. His origin shows someone who has no real perception of justice and works with a man who is making orphans go insane. Being a detective for L was never about serving justice. While that is a nice side effect, every case L undertakes is nothing more than a game. This is further emphasized by him not taking on cases of any significance, no matter how horrific or unjust they are. If there are not 10 plus people dead or $1 million on the line, L typically will not entertain the case. The morality of L will be covered much later in the story, but for now, this is an introduction to the smartest mind in the world. Watari is a world-renowned inventor and the founder of Wami's House, where he himself tries to invent a new L. L had been Watari's greatest quote-unquote invention. Becoming the world's greatest detective, the smartest mind on the planet, able to solve any case that he went after, and able to make 2 million percent gains in 2 years, Watari would attempt to replicate the brilliance of L by establishing an orphanage and taking in the most gifted children from all around the world, with the sole intention of one of them being a successor to L. This environment was described as extremely stressful, although each one of these children was talented in their own right, most of them never had any chance of living up to L, and the first generation of these kids were all anticipated to fail. This could not be more unequivocal for the character of A. A, along with B standing for backup, were the first children to arrive at Wami's house. A, before B, was informed that he was in line to become L's successor. However, as time went on, the pressure of living up to the world's greatest detective overwhelmed him. Unable to handle this stress, he sees it as a burden and ends up taking his own life. This was expected by Watari. Wami's house was cold. They were not overly concerned if the first generation of children died. It is unknown whether the treatment of these orphans ever changed after the deaths of A and eventually B. Either way, L or Watari never mention it. This is something that is never shown in the main story and hides a deep secret behind Wami's house and Watari. Watari wanted to find L's successor. Even though L himself was still very young, his line of work did put him in constant danger. This comes in direct conflict later in the story. Wami's house was genuinely a corrupt orphanage. There would be no justice to be found inside that place, but it's just something to keep in mind for later. L is often built up as being the good or justice side of Death Note, when it isn't as straightforward as what it portrays. A commits suicide because he knew he could never live up to the greatness of L. B felt a similar way. The primary suspect in the Los Angeles BB murder case, Beyond Birthday, was a part of the first generation at Wami's house. He came after A, and just like A, was a prototype and expected to fail from the beginning. However, instead of ending it all, a few months prior to the murders in Los Angeles, B would just leave Wami's house. Having the same expectations set upon him, B was raised to succeed L. However, this was never going to happen. Beginning the L, A, B, B, murder case. Each one of the children at the orphanage had been there for a specific reason. Flown in from all corners of the world, they had all been stated to be gifted in some way. And Beyond Birthday's gift turned out to be more of a curse than a gift. For some unnatural reason that no one can explain even to this day, Beyond Birthday was born with Shinigami eyes, allowing him to see the name and exact time of death of every individual he would ever come across. This made B insane. The constant reminder of death was around every corner and from the moment he had been born, this is all he knew. As a result, his name, Beyond Birthday, comes from the fact that he can see beyond the birthday. Without the Death Note, having the eyes of a death god, Shinigami eyes may seem useless. However, that is not the case. It is implied that the world of Death Note is entirely predetermined. No regular human action can affect the natural flow of events. So if B sees someone who's about to die in, say, 5 seconds, he knows that's a person who he could realistically kill. The time of a person's death does not change from the moment they are born, unless it was from outside interference in the case of a Shinigami or a Death Note. This gives B an advantage when he commits his murders. Still, no one knows how or why he has these eyes. 
Later in the novel, the narrator, who is Mello, theorizes that if Shinigami are stupid enough to drop notebooks from their world, they could also be stupid enough to drop their eyes. Comparing someone to L is unfair to the regular person, but Beyond Birthday was intelligent in his own way. He was brought into Whammy's house to succeed L, and knowing that L could solve any case, he would directly challenge the man he was modeled after to be, and throw at him a case that would become impossible to solve. The world of Death Note is dark, and all of Beyond Birthday's victims' crime scenes have been left in absolute carnage. One of them had limbs torn off, another one he had poked the eyes out of a girl's skull, all in the name of leaving clues for L. Throughout the story, Naomi Misora, who was suspended from the FBI for not having the conviction to shoot a child, is guided by L, who still remains anonymous throughout and only communicates via a synthetic voice. While investigating the crime scene, Misora is met with someone else who claims to be a detective as well, and goes under the name Ryu Ryuzaki. This is a man who in appearance is described as having dark messy hair, shadows under his eyes, poor posture, and a white t-shirt. The story builds this up and leads you on to think that this is L himself doing some undercover groundwork for the case he is interested in. However, it is not. It was Beyond Birthday himself imitating L in the creepiest way imaginable. Going through Mizora to challenge him, guiding her through crime scene puzzles that he himself had set up, his intention was to surpass L, and his plan may have actually worked. There was no way to prove that he had Shinigami eyes until they became common knowledge later, but he did not account for Naomi Misora herself. From the beginning, L knows that the person behind these murders is probably B from Whammy's house. He never met B, but he knew of his disappearance, and with these 300 IQ puzzles left at the crime scenes, this was obviously not your average serial killer. While Beyond Birthday is side by side working with Naomi Mizora, sharing with her all of the information, by the time of the fourth and final murder, her original gut feeling on Ryuzaki was correct. The man who named himself Ryuzaki, Beyond Birthday himself, was the final victim of the Los Angeles murders. And in the same way every other victim was tortured immensely prior to death, B sets himself on fire and attempts to make his face unrecognizable and really make this an unsolvable case for L. However, he did not count on Naomi Mizura uncovering the truth. As he's burning alive, Mizura arrests him as the main suspect of the LABB murder case. The only chance B ever had at surpassing L was not to become the world's greatest detective, but instead becoming the world's greatest criminal in a case that could not be solved. Born with the Shinigami eyes, he was seemingly perfect for that role. He, however, did not become the world's greatest criminal, only giving thought into one person, he underestimated everyone except for L. He did not account for this random FBI agent to be as perceptive as Naomi Misora was, and was only focused on L. Not long after the case, Mizora leaves the FBI to start a family with the one and only Ray Pemba. There has been no official art for Beyond Birthday B. Because of his resemblance to L, it is thought that this, the cover of the novel, is actually B instead of L himself. This can be debated since L never appears in the story in person until the final page. There is a case for him not to appear on the front cover. However, outside of that, no official art can be found of B or A anywhere. The first generation of Whammy's house was a failure. This, however, was anticipated. Beyond Birthday survived his own suicide and had become a criminal. Later, two years from where this story takes place, he would mysteriously die in a Californian prison of a heart attack.